All right. Let's fucking do it. the fuck is up everybody welcome to the world's finest program it's the dusty show and uh you might have noticed we're not evil this week what the fuck i got fired god damn it i knew it was gonna happen they keep me out of my evil lair you know what it was ricky schroeder ricky schroeder took my job working for the idf guys what the fuck so now i'm living in my van down by the fucking river again son of a bitch don't worry though i got some fillers out for other evil organizations i might go work for trump I got uh, a note in. Maybe he'll hit me back. Maybe I'll go work for Biden. He likes to murder children. That's cool. Could work for Disney. We'll see. We'll see. But uh, tonight, I'm back to just being a normal, nice. Was I nice before? I don't know. Regular Dusty? Whatever. Uh, So we'll see what the fuck happens. I'm sure I'll be evil again in no time. But I did miss the uh, theme song. It fucking rocks. So I'm glad to have that back. I'm all out of breath and shit. Got to get back on my working out. God damn it. Work out. Anyway, I'll get there. I'll get there. I'm still a little loopy, you know, from all the uh, drug abuse, but it's fine. It's fine. My brain's working it out. It's making the connections again and my neurons and shit. No permanent brain damage, I don't think. So uh, we'll see what the fuck happens. How's it right doing tonight? I uh, have a short show for you guys tonight. Not a whole lot of things happened. Thursday was pretty fucking boring, but uh, we're going to finger bang right through it all. And uh, it'll still be fun hanging out together. You really do belong to Disney. I have the uh, hair for it. Speaking of hair, folks, I'm going to do the first ever uh, hair tutorial I've ever done on the show. Makeup slash hair. People have asked me about this. My hair makeup routine. And so I didn't put any hair makeup in yet. And we'll show you guys uh, exactly how I do it. So uh, first off, I come from a long line of bald motherfuckers. It's usually your mom's side of the family. My uh, mom's dad, bald as fuck. Just whole middle of his head, nothing there. My whole life, never saw no hair that motherfucker's head. Some bitch gave me those jeans. And so uh, one day I was like in my 20s and I was at Supercuts. And the girl was like, uh, how do you feel about going bald? And I never realized I was going bald before. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she like looked real surprised. And she's like, oh, it's like she knows she wasn't supposed to fucking say that. And uh, it was at that point I realized, oh, shit, I'm in trouble. So then like uh, when I was in Denver, I went and had hair transplant surgery. That's when they cut off a big section of the back of your fucking head. And they rip all the hair off of it. And they poke it in your fucking top of your head and shit. It's your own hair. Uh, but it comes from different places. A little bit back here. Some up from my ass probably. I don't know. I, I wasn't paying much attention. But uh, even then, though. Even though that uh, I had hair reconstruction surgery on top of my big ass stupid fucking bald head, and even though I take uh, uh, minoxidil and uh, finasteride, minoxidil you get that off Amazon, and finasteride is like uh, just these pills. I get it from Mexico. You gotta have a prescription for them, but I get it from Mexico. It's fine. Get it off the internet. Uh, but still, even though I do that and my hair has grown out a lot better than it has, I'm not completely fucking bald anymore. Uh, my head is still thinner than I would like it to be. And so I cheat. I'm going to show you guys how I do that. So I'll show you. So you see the top of my head right here. Uh, it's thinner than I want it to be. It's not bald, but you can see, you can kind of see because of my white hair, you can kind of see my scalp through it a little bit. And it's way worse than I fucking want it to be, right? Sucks. Uh, so I cheat. I use hair powder. Now, the thing is, you got to have at least some hair there. It doesn't work if you're like completely fucking bald as a goddamn baby's ass. It don't fucking work. It looks stupid. But as long as you have something for the ha- for the uh, hair fibers to hang on to, uh, it's made out of chitin or some shit. It's like, uh, I don't know, same thing your hair is made out of, but like shrimp tails and bullshit. Anyway, um, I get the generic shit, 
Because you can just get the cheap shit. I'll show you over here before I, before I put it on. Um, I get it from Amazon. I just bought the cheap shit. This bag of stuff. It's like, a, what, 18 bucks for this bag. Now, I did. The first time I ever bought it, I bought the name brand shit, which is Kabuki. Um, it, it's, it's too expensive, though. I only bought it to get the uh, container, though. The container you pop the lid off of, you can put the cheap shit in it, and you can use the container just like you bought the expensive shit. So it's cool. So here's how it works. Just uh, tap it on your head. Tap, 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 tap. Tappy tap. Little tappy tap. Tap, tap. Next thing you know, boom. You got a full fucking head of hair. Hell yeah, boom. Motherfuckers. What? I just cheated fucking time itself with a full fucking head of powdery ass hair. So it's like a powdery fucking wig from a politician in England from the 1800s. But it works good. Like... On video, you can't even fucking tell. That's all filled in and shit. Just like that. Boom, 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 motherfuckers. Hell yeah. And if uh, you don't want it to like uh, spread it where you need to use like hairspray. I don't use hairspray or another shit like that because I don't go any fucking where. I don't care. Like I just take a shower and get it out of my hair when I'm done the fucking show. So pretty cool, right? Little tips from me to you. Real men are comfortable being bald and don't have to use makeup and shit, but I am not comfortable. So I'm going to pay $18,000 for an alpha male boot camp right after I leave this show. That's where I'm going after that. Uh, Dusty is lucky I'm bald. Uh, you know, it's fine. Being bald is cool these days. It's all good. But I paid good money to have some hair, so I might as well take advantage of it the best I possibly can. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like it. Life hack. Hell yeah. They got a few good years of hair left. Well, hold on to it. Like, if you're thinking about the fact that your hair might fall out someday, start taking finasteride right now. That's the important thing. It, when you're young, when you're 20s, you need to start immediately taking it because it really will help. The combination of uh, finasteride and minoxidil work real well together. The finasteride um, thickens your hair, and minoxidil regrows it. So the two things together actually help fill it in a good bit. So, uh, hell yeah. And they do it. I did yesterday, folks. I watched... Dune! The first fucking Dune! Hell yeah, on uh, my Apple Vision Pro. Now, I'd seen it before, but something about the Apple Vision Pro just makes it so much easier to pay attention to what the fuck you're watching. Because, like, uh, the, the combination of the Apple Pro earbuds and the noise cancellation, it just gets rid of all the noise, and then you've got this headset on, and you're completely in the theater by yourself. There's no chairs or anything. you just got this big fucking screen in front of you, and it's piping the audio right into your brain, so it's real easy to pay attention to. So I watched this Doom movie in 3D. I'm preparing for the second one, which I hear is amazing. One of the best sci-fi movies ever made. And uh, like I said, I watched it again, but I wasn't really paying attention, so I watched it again last night, and uh, good! It's a good movie! I didn't really care for it the first time, but I, I actually paid attention to this time. And enjoyed it, so that's cool. I'm um, looking forward to watching the second one. I guess they didn't make the second one in 3D, though. But uh, they have, like, some aftermarket ways to make it into 3D. So hopefully they'll have, like, a version of that out for too long and I can actually get it. So, uh, Louis, yeah, I heard Louis Gossett Jr. died. Um, Lieberman died, too, a couple days ago. Everybody's dropping dead except for me, baby. I'm going to fucking live forever. Hell, yeah, I'm hot, though. Let me turn my fan on. And uh, what you guys saying over there? Gossett was great. I like Gossett. I watched him in Digstown. That was a good movie. You ever see that? He had to, like, box, like, ten people in a single day. I think it had a... What's that motherfucker's name? Anyway, it doesn't matter. The guy I don't like. I've been shaving head for... Uh, since I was 16. So if I go bald, it won't matter. That's the way to do it. Get everybody used to it. Did you watch the original? Yeah, well, when I was a kid, I watched the original Dune. It sucked. That's why I wasn't excited for the new Dunes, because the original sucked so fucking bad. Father, the sleeper has awakened. Shut the fuck up. You... What is that movie he's in? That cow motherfucker. I think he's like a, a right-wing dickhead. Uh, thick liver shit. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of him anyway. Probably for anyone who hasn't seen Doing, but does anyone think the guy that killed Kid was actually his girlfriend's dad? I don't know what you're talking about. Didn't see that story. And, all right, let's go ahead and kick the show off, folks. As always, the Super Chats are open. It's the lifeblood of the show. No questions dodged. Every question answers. If you look behind me, there is a little dollar sign over here. Boom. See it? See it? It's over there. You click it. And then uh, you donate money. And the more you donate, the more serious I'll your question. Because I am a slut. A bald fucking aging slut. 
So pay me for my love and uh, you'll get it. <laughs> That's the way it works. So thank you in advance. And uh, no floating cats tonight. Got rid of them tonight. We're going to have a special guest, another special donkey guest tonight. We'll see at the end of the show. So uh, prepare yourself for that. Going to be cool. Not going to tell you who it is, but uh, you'll like it. Not Penny this time. It's another one, a brand new dog. You guys have been requesting dogs. So I'm trying to listen to you and uh, do it. The spice is worm shit. I get out all that spice, motherfucker. I do all the spice. You guys know me. Whole fucking week, another but spice. Love that shit. I be drinking my own sweat and tears, just like those nasty motherfuckers. You know I would. And all right, let's go ahead and kick the show off, folks. Gonna do a little something I like to call. The Odds of Parody! And uh, strike us off on tonight's Beyond Parody. You guys watch the show know that I watch a lot of UFC, but I recommend you don't ever buy UFC. There's no reason to ever buy the UFC because like uh, 10 minutes after the PP Reads are over, it's on the Pirate Bay in full high definition. Do not pay Dana White fucking money. So, uh, Dan uh, so uh, UFC is like Chudville now. All the fighters, everybody in that organization tries to outdo themselves to uh, prove what a bigger chud-ass MAGA dickhead that can be. Donald Trump's always going and hanging out there. They fucking love him. And one of the dipshits is uh, Jake Shields. Don't get punched in the head for a living. So Jake Shields is like, any man who wore a mask or got vaccinated is a coward or stupid. Yeah, you know you are. Be cautious of these men and never fully trust them. That's right. Never fully trust a man who ever, ever wore a mask. Who's this now? Yeah, that's you. You wore a mask. You did it continuously. You fucking virtue signaling slut. And uh, even the reader comments busting his ass out. Jake wore a mask. Yes, you did. You hypocritical dickhead. Beyond parody, this motherfucker is. And then on Beyond Parody. Oh, <laughs> Hard to believe this is true, but it's not really because this is such a stupid fucking planet we live on. So uh, you guys know what bored apes are the death of apes. Not the, death, the death of art and, and should be the death of apes. Just kill all the apes in the planet just for how horrible this shit is. Uh, so what makes bored apes so, ri so ridiculous, so cringe is that these people actually think this is cool or they at least at the time did. They thought this was some edgy, badass thing that they wanted to be involved in. And they wanted to not only be involved in it, they wanted to revolve their entire personalities around fucking this. This lame, cringe, ridiculous horseshit. And lost all their money. People paying hundreds of thousands of dollars for JPEGs they could have right-clicked for fucking free. Uh, so this is a real guy, real person, real post. It is with a heavy heart I announce the sale of my long-term ape, Salazar. It's got a fucking name, y'all. Most of my early followers know me as this ape. Oh, my God, dude. Kill yourself. Not really, but a little bit. My kid. Oh, my God. Poor kid. My kids know me as this ape. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Even your kids don't respect you. My, I met my wife when I was this ape. Oh, my God. It's a good thing you're rich. You got to be rich. You would have paid hundreds of dollars for this fucking picture. That's why you got your wife. I can assure you. Not because it's fucking ape. And I had my first kid when I was still proudly wore this ape. By extension, it is part of me. I traveled around the world with this ape in my pocket. We went to the most luxurious hotels, the craziest nightclubs, and the most serene beaches. We had it all. Unfortunately, what Blur, I guess that's the name of a company uh, he's mad at, is doing to apes is frankly unacceptable. Oh, no, you didn't do this to our apes. Since the creation of Blur, the ape floor price has tumbled from 85E down to 12E. Who could have possibly seen this coming? Two weeks ago, myself and around 15 other high-ranking ape members, there are high-ranking ape members. There's a hierarchy to motherfuckers who buy this bullshit. Good God. It's got a mass extinction going on. Gathered at the recent International 8 workshop. What the fuck? All these words should exist. In Miami. And on behalf of the community, we wrote and delivered a notarized letter. You had it notarized? You nerds. Begging Pac-Man to stop this nonsense at once. I'm assuming he didn't. Anyway, uh, long story short, as of today, March 28, 2024, Pac-Man has refused to acknowledge our letter. So uh, he has no choice. He has to sell his apes. All his apes is gone, y'all. 
and he's like uh, answering comments. You're like, it's just a JPEG, dude. And he responds to many apes. It is more than that and reflects an extension of our personality. Good God, if this is an extension of personality, if this is what you built your personality around, you didn't have a fucking personality. Okay, this is just sad. This is like people that revolve their entire personalities around MAGA, except worse somehow. How are you worse than MAGA? You, you figure it out somehow. Life finds a way. Good God, a man. Get your priorities together. And uh, then, folks, ladies and gentlemen, I give you one of the most famous, famous, one of the most popular bands of all time. This is Imagine Dragons. This is how horrible the planet we live in is. Well, actually, in this song, I'm doing a hybrid. You may be a, you may be a believer, believer. Dan, what do you do? You go high? You made me a, you made me a believer, believer. Yeah, the kind of the octave up. And then Wayne oh, and wow. I are down low. Made me a, you made me a believer, believer. And then bring it all together now, please, One, without two, any. Three, four. You made me a, you made me a believer, believer. Oh God, you made me an unbeliever. Oh fuck me! Holy shit! I don't want to believe in anything ever again. What is this? These guys are millionaires from this. I can sing better than that. You made me a, you made. Okay, maybe I can't. Anyway, next up on Beyond Parody. Folks, Elon Musk finally came up with a genius marketing plan to get people to sign up for blue check marks. Wait till you hear this one, okay? Going forward, all X accounts, every one of them, with over 2,500 verified, that means 2,500 people who are following you who have the blue check marks, who are paying every month for the blue check marks. We'll get premium features for free. And accounts with over 5,000 will get premium plus for free. That's right. Elon Musk, the richest man in the world, throwing open the vault. Just throwing all the money in the world. Gonna reward you people for having a bunch of blue check marks follow you. Only here's the thing. Per data from the last month, there were four accounts with over 5,000 subscribers and eight accounts, including the four, with over 2,500 subscribers. So four people, including Elon, can now save $20 a month and four others can save $10 a month. Richest man in the world. His genius marketing plan is $100 a month, folks. Good God, you can't make this shit up. What a cheap bitch he is. I mean, reminds me of Mr. Burns. I didn't get rich by writing a bunch of checks. I guess there's somebody that might fall for this obvious Ponzi scheme, but it ain't me, Elon. And then, as you guys saw on the thumbnail, new viral thing on the internet, Alpha Male Boot Camp. It's hard to believe this. It's like the Board 8 bullshit. All right? If you need a boot camp to be an Alpha Male, you will never fucking be an Alpha Male. If you pay... Ten to eighteen thousand dollars, as the gentleman did, to be a part of this. You are the very definition of a beta male forever. No reversing it. So anyway, imagine paying ten to eighteen thousand dollars to have somebody treat you like this. Look at each other. Look to your left and your right. More than sixty percent will not be here fucking Friday. I guarantee it, and I'll make sure. I'll make sure you earn the right to be here every fucking second. Because I see in your fucking eyes that most of you don't fucking belong here. And I'll be dead. I'll take this fucking knife off my fucking waist and carve this fucking tattoo off my fucking hand before that you fucking shit kids show up here on Friday for the graduation. I see in your fucking eyes already. Your fucking souls are mine. Mm. <laughs> nice. They obviously have some kind of sexual fetish or something. That's what this really is, right? They can't be serious. They just want to have a, a daddy scream at them and treat them badly so they can whack off to it later. Anyway, here's what they paid for. Afraid you will quit when shit gets hard. Quit now. Or get up that mountain. Let's go. Hurry up. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, you've already quit. You're done. Fucking go! Hold yourself accountable. 
Daddy, you're quit again. Up. You stop fighting. Stop fighting! Quit. Your check didn't clear. We're going to drag you down back to the bottom of the fucking hill. There's even more. Everybody loves making fun of these motherfuckers, and I don't blame them. It is delicious. You don't fucking deserve to be here. Fucking quit. You piece of shit. I want to be a better man. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better, you fucking whiny yes, piece daddy. of shit. Yes, daddy. Yell at me louder, daddy. None of you deserve to be here. Back. Back. You better move with a fucking purpose. Super alpha man. Belly. You know you're an alpha male when you let another guy treat you like shit. Back. Belly. You could have just done CrossFit. You fucking morons. Feet. Back. Back. Hurry up. Hurry up, motherfuckers. Belly. Belly. Get on your Feet. bellies. You paid money Back. for this. Get over here. You don't get to Where's keep you? the fucking, you fucking sledgehammers. Slow fat one. Slow fat one. Both of you. You're gonna sit. Get over here, fucking quitter on quitter. Mm -hmm. What the fuck you on quit? Never heard of that shit. Sit down. Sit down right here. You two are gonna share this fucking cookie. Oh, all of you start crawling. Start crawling. Yeah. <laughs> Paying eighteen thousand dollars to be abused. Crawl. What the and fuck? Until you're done with that I cookie. feel sorry so for these guys. Share that fucking cookie. Go. Yeah. Eat the fucking cookie. Imagine how bad you feel about yourself. So you want to subject yourself to this. Just sit there. Eat the fucking eat, cookie. Eat, eat the cookie. So they are gonna suffer until you're done eating it, and you better fucking share it. Oh, now they're doing some MMA. Serious daddy stuff. Now they're crawling over each other. Not gay at all. Definitely not some homoerotic bullshit happening here. Needs more ball touching. The bitch and the beast. The bitch is the inner critic. The beast is the advocate. The advocate supports you, roots you on, cheers for you. Yeah, you're but all the bitches. critic, your inner bitch, is always doubting you and telling you that you can't and that you've done enough and to set lower goals and expectations of yourself. When I go into the gym every morning, I go to war with my body, I go to war with the weights, I go to war with my mindset, with that yeah. bitch voice Alpha in my male. head that says, put the weights down, you've done I wanna enough sets I want to be like this guy. Weights. And I know you're like, damn, bro, that sounds intense. Yeah. Stupid. Yes, being yeah, it sounds like you have low self-esteem or something, and you have to psych yourself up all the time just to get out of fucking bed. Five. Here's five. Here's five. Are you touching me? Are you touching me? Are you touching me? Get the fuck off of me. Get the fuck off of me. I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. Fucking bitch. Oh, get in the fucking tub. In the tub. Every one of you. So, super cool. And then, graduation day happened, folks. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I bet graduate, graduation day was so fucking cool, it's going to blow my mind. And uh, maybe, let's see. Oh, yeah. that's not it. That's coming up next. Here's the graduation day. This graduation. This graduation. Seven of you earned this graduation. Out of the 25 that had registered for this class, 19 that showed, seven of you earned this graduation. Earned it. And so with that said, class 019 of the project. You paid to get treated like shit. You earned it. And by earning, he means paid. Yeah, get a shower. Good God. You guys are alpha males now. You can get all the women. That's how it works. As soon as you leave the fucking classroom, women just throw their vagins at you. And yep, how much does it cost? There's no price that is enough for this. 18,000, yes, 18,000, but the cost of not experiencing it and of not becoming the leader, husband, and father you're meant to be is much more expensive in the long run. So, like, you really can't afford not to do it, in my opinion. So, what a bargain. Definitely not embarrassing in any way whatsoever. And, yeah, like, instead of $9,000, $18,000 for your alpha male boot camp, just sign up for the military. But you won't do that. Not that that actually makes you alpha male either. I don't blame you. But all of it's fucking stupid. And you guys should be incredibly embarrassed. And that is my Beyond Parody for this week. It's sad. I feel sorry for those dudes. It's low self-esteem. I don't feel manly enough. I don't feel masculine enough. So I got to have somebody scream at me. And uh, I have to prove to myself. But like, when you have to continuously prove things to yourself and other men, 
that's a sign of insecurity. That's one of the reasons that I don't have a lot of guy friends. I'd like to hang out with other men because they're always trying to puff out their chest and prove what a big swing of dick they are. And it's just like, dude, just fucking relax. Who gives a shit? Just be comfortable enough in your own skin. And that's how you really, I mean, I don't believe in the whole alpha beta thing, but the more comfortable you are in your own skin, the more you, you seem confident and the more people are attracted to you, the more people want to be like you. Not if you let some dude treat you like fucking shit and abuse you. That doesn't prove you're an alpha. That proves the exact opposite of that. It proves you're a gullible, sad little boy. My inner bitch is hot. I bet it is. Dog in black. I want to see that shit. Jake, tell me about your alpha man boot camp. Yeah, more like a booty camp. I bet they're all butt fucking like a motherfucker after that shit's over. Sounds like you're being a beta there, Dusty. I'm a beta like a... Oh, I can't think of a beta. Let me think about who I think is a real fucking beta. I guess I won't do that. That's mean. Uh, but they just want to be the great. I know they just want to, you know, they just, they don't feel good about themselves. And they want to feel better about themselves. And this is how they feel like they have to do that. But it's just, it's sad. You definitely don't need that to feel like a man. Tactical dickheads. Oh, sure. And all right, we're all off, folks. Get your super chats in. We're going to do some Chud Watch. Chud Watch. Eric Trump. Woo! And uh, let's check in with the RNC and see how they're doing. After just nine months, the Arizona Republican Party's new headquarters is about to become its old headquarters. The building on Central Avenue across from Park Avenue Mall has major financial and logistical downsides that could have hindered the party in an election year. So they're selling their building already, folks. They've let Donald Trump take over the GOP, funnel all the money to his uh, lawyers, and they ain't got money for shit, which is a great thing, to be honest with you. Uh, the more Donald Trump sucks them off, <laughs> uh, the less chance their politicians have of getting elected. Uh, so keep it up, GOP. It seems bad, but uh, I like it. And uh, speaking of the new leader of the GOP, of the RNC, over on the DNC side, they have a record amounts of cash right now. Joe Biden raking it the fuck in. And uh, sophisticated voter outreach programs. Meanwhile, over the RNC side, they have Laura Trump. And uh, let's see what Laura Trump is spending her time doing. She's putting out new songs. This is definitely going to get mass donations, y'all. And uh, warning for those who with a cringe-induced entries. Even when it's getting hard in this hurricane, Life, you still gotta spread your wings and fly. So don't think, just jump. You can't give up. Know that anything is possible. You really tell me this woman ain't got nobody in her life that loves her enough to be honest with her that she can't sing worth the goddamn shit. Like, who is paying for this studio time? Like, dude, her husband does not love her. This is bad. You should feel bad about it. But please give it up, RNC. Don't think that's going to go well for you in the long run. I guess we'll find out. Yikes. And then, guys, know who John Eastman is? John Eastman is the lawyer who came up with the idea that uh, Trump could just overthrow the government and solve himself as a dictator. They can get an alternative slate of electorates. And just have Mike Pence say, oh, I, I'm the vice president. I get to choose who the president is and just decide Trump's the president. Remember that guy? Uh, here's a refresher. Dealing with uncharted territory where the right to vote was not the way the legislature had prescribed. Mm -hmm. Whether it's eliminating the observers in the nursing homes or allowing for absentee ballots or allowing for human drop boxes here in this county. None of that was legal and the number of ballots that were affected by that illegality was much greater than the margin. Now, the Wisconsin legislature therefore in my view, not just up until January 6th or inauguration, but today as well, mm -hmm. has the ability to look at the assessment and say, you know, our election was illegally certified. Mm -hmm. The consequences of that, we can fight about.
Well, uh, turns out he got disbarred. Yep, no longer a lawyer. Everything Trump touches turns to shed. Everybody associated with him fails miserably. Imagine working your entire life to get a law degree, build up a law firm, and give it all away for Donald Trump. But they do. They keep falling on their swords for the orange scoop over and over and over again. And it's beautiful. Meanwhile, little bitty Spiro is super salty, y'all. You see, he's been his whole career talking about cancel culture, okay? He likes freedom of speech, and he doesn't like the fact that people get fired for what they say. He would never be the type of person that would just fire somebody because of what they say, right? Because uh, he's not a hypocrite in any way whatsoever. It, but it turns out he fucking is because uh, he really likes child murder, super 100% pro-Israeli, and uh, Candace Owen somehow decided she didn't like the child murder so much and spoke out against it. So he's like, no, no, you must love child murder or you're fired. And so he can't the shit out of her. And so he's on Pierce Morgan, who's also a giant fucking piece of shit. And uh, watch how salty he is, refusing to answer any questions. Because he's so fucking brave, y'all. Um, was she fired or did she leave of her own volition? I'm not going to speak to this topic, Pierce. At, at all? At all. You can't give me any uh, insight into why she departed? No hints, no nothing. I'm not going to speak to this. C can, I ask, can I ask why? A total pussy. Because I'm a I mean, You can ask. No, no, I'm not. You can ask why you don't want to say anything. Um, again, you can ask. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean I'm, I'm only curious <laughs> because I know what a, a staunch defender of free speech you are. But he's not. And it would surprise me if it, it had been someone's opinions that would make you it want was. to part company with them. That's what However, happened. However, contentious. I mean, suffice it to say, the only thing I will say is what I've said all along with regard to Candace or with regard to any of our other hosts. I am not in hiring and firing position <laughs> with The Daily Wire. No I'm a co-founder of, of The Daily Wire. I'm a co-owner of The Daily Wire. I'm not actually in management. Right. Jeremy and Boring and Caleb Robinson are in management positions with regard to Candace or anyone else. And as far as the free speech situation, what I will say is that no company has the obligation to literally pay anyone the, the daily wire but that's is literally what you've been arguing this whole fucking time that companies shouldn't fire people because they disagree with what they say that companies shouldn't expect their employees uh, to behave a way that makes the company look good and if they fire anybody for their opinions or for what they say that that is cancel culture and that is something that the evil left does that is your narrative from the very fucking beginning so now of course it's him so it's a completely different ball game is it is a publisher it is not a platform. I've never called for Candace or anyone else for that matter to be banned from YouTube, to be banned from X, to be banned from any platform. That's a different story, obviously, when it comes to any publisher. Any publisher gets to make decisions about what it wishes to, uh, what it wishes to purvey and not. I mean, that's literally the opposite of what you said about Twitter. Twitter was a, a left-wing censorship machine that was barring people from their platform because of their opinions, and that's evil. It's the downfall of America. That's a hundred percent what your argument was. Now, completely, completely the opposite. I'm just not going to labour this, but one more point I would make is it's been reported extensively that the reason for her departure was because uh, her comments had been perceived by people at the Daily Wire as anti-Semitic. It wasn't perceived as anti-Semitic at all. They just say it's anti-Semitic because they don't want to admit the truth. They're completely for child murder. They're fucking evil as shit. And uh, she wasn't on board with that particular narrative of evil. She on board with every other narrative of evil, but that one was too far for her, and that's why you guys get rid of her. Just own up to it, Ben. But I know you want, because you're a hypocritical sack of shit. And then... Oh, try it right, bitch, y'all. She's a terrorist. I mean, let's just face it. Libs of TikTok, Chaya Rat bitch, is a fucking terrorist. She knows exactly what she's doing. She uh, doxes people and companies knowing that as soon as she does it, the terrorists who follow her are going to send threats, going to send bomb threats, going to spread violence towards whoever she targets. So she's like, guys, you won't believe this. It's about to get even worse for Planet Fitness. I bet you can't guess what happened next. Yep, you can. Police investigate bomb threats at multiple Rhode Island Planet Fitness locations, to which she immediately takes no responsibility for. Left this media to blame me in three, two, one, because it's your fucking fault. You know it's your fault. You literally said it yourself. It's about to get even worse. Yeah, bomb threats. That's what always happens to everybody when you out them on your fucking Twitter page. 
Just no responsibility for it. That's Republicanism, Conservatism 101. Zero responsibility, zero agency for fucking anything. Meanwhile, you guys might remember on my last show, I talked about the bridge collapse and how conservatives used it to be racist as shit. Immediately blame black people for the bridge collapsing, even though it didn't have anything to fucking do with black people. One of the main people, incredibly popular uh, right-wing douchebag influencer, uh, Elijah Schaefer, who put out multiple racist tweets making fun of the uh, black mayor of, uh, well, what is it, Baltimore, amongst other things. And uh, But don't worry, folks. He has a very, very good excuse for why he's a racist piece of shit. When people tell me, like, you share racist stuff, how is that in line with Jesus? You go, well, Jesus is the son of God, but he also is God, Trinitarian, Trinitarianly speaking. So there were moments where God literally punished the king, Saul being one of them, for literally refusing to wipe out entire nations. And to this day, because of the refusal to wipe out Amalek, uh, they still have problems with the Amalekites down the road today. We still have Arab issues because of the Hittites, some of the other groups that even you go back even further, that they refused, that they had bashes with in their offspring. So God literally was trying to prevent future problems by bringing judgment that seemed cruel. When people tell me like- <laughs> That's right! Hey, God was a giant fucking piece of shit in the Bible too, so it's okay for me to be racist. Ironclad logic. Nice conservatives, uh, the best among us as always. And then, over on Reddit, just went public if you guys want to get in on the Reddit IPO. Highly overvalued at the moment. Doesn't matter. Uh, Joe Rogan passionately defending Jordan Peterson and his defense is just so ridiculous. Let's have a look at just a short piece of it. So, to set this up, uh, Joe Rogan has a bunch of his comedian friends at a round robin, and they're talking, and they were talking a little bit of shit about Jordan Peterson, and he no likey, so he's going to defend his uh, daddy, Jordan Peterson. Here's how that went. Here's the thing, that, that's the, the, the super mind fuck is when people get famous, like Jordan Peterson style. When they get famous when he they're He got older. hotter. He was got great. higher and then went loopy well, bins. You know, what it is is he uh, he started eating only meat. <laughs> little bonkies. Little bonks. Yeah, he <laughs> got a little bonkies. <laughs> what do you think is bonker? Uh, what? You know, denying global warming. Uh, pretty much every word out of his fucking mouth is batshit goddamn crazy. So much so that he started dressing like the Riddler from Batman. What do you say that's bonkers? He's a little bonkers. I don't know. It just seems like famous, example. famous. Too famous? Entering rehab. Oh, be you know Pills. what that is? Yeah. He, Pills. unfortunately, did not know the side effects of benzodiazepines. Okay, yeah, yeah. stop right there. So you're saying one of the world's most famous psychologists did not know how harmful benzodiazepam is. That's what you're telling me. Now, I know there's a difference between psychologist and psychiatrist, right? But... Any psychologist worth their salt should absolutely know what benzos are because there is a great chance that some of their clients might be on those, right? That's like 101 stuff, especially a world famous cited in scientific journals all over the world should 100% know what benzos are. So this is bullshit to fucking begin with. All right. Continue. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like an actor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cole Smith. The guy just took him. He'll tell you he took him because he, yeah. he was really struggling. But I think part of the reason why he's struggling is his wife is going through cancer. All right, <laughs> stop. All right, first of all, even this was true. All right, my dad died. I've had all kinds of horrible things happen to me. I ain't never got addicted to benzos, okay? Things happen to fucking motherfuckers all over the place all the time. They don't go get addicted to drugs like this, right? So... Why should someone who's obviously not very mentally strong be a thought leader, be a guru, be someone who we listen to for life advice? Clearly, they're not strong enough to handle their own fucking shit like we all do every day of our goddamn lives. He's a smart guy. Read the label. I think exactly. that, it's crazy. I think yeah, 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 yeah. People, advice on humanity. Listen, man. Read the label. If, if you did something... That, yeah. Like, um, like if you do play golf, you play golf, yeah, right? I have, if I yeah. if I came to you, but I don't play. So if <laughs> yeah, I came yeah. to you, so what's the thing that you do that I don't do? Golf. Yeah. Okay. So if I came to you, and go. How do you do this? <laughs> yeah. I would just listen. 
Because right. you do it and I don't do it. So if you're a doctor, a psychologist, you call your friend who's a psychiatrist and you say, I'm going through take this. These. What should I do? Take right. this. Don't right, worry. Take You're going to feel way better. He takes Xan. No! You would look it up! We the Wikipedia pay literally any fucking thing. He would already fucking know what they do. He clearly knew what they did. Any goddamn psychologist worth their salt would know what they do. Uh, secondly, we want to even go into the whole thing about how uh, supposedly his wife got cancer, and that's why he got so addicted to benzos, and then he had to go get put into a coma. And then uh, she miraculously was healed, y'all. Look at this story. She suddenly doesn't have cancer anymore. They never really explained any of that bullshit, but it seems like he just made up that whole story in order to justify getting addicted to benzos, even though it doesn't justify that to begin with. Thirdly, he's so mentally weak, frail, that he can't get off benzos like every other normal person does. He has to go to Russia and get put into a coma for weeks on end in order to be strong enough to get off of them. Okay, this is not a man you should be listening to. This is not a man you should be taking life advice fucking from. This is a goddamn frail, mentally weak moon bat, Joe Rogan. And actually feels way better, but he doesn't realize that there's one of two things that's commonly used that'll kill you yeah. if you just jump off it. One's alcohol, the other is benzos. Oh yeah. no, is that right? right? <laughs> alcohol? Got, if you're an alcoholic. Anyway, just looting tunes, but got to defend his daddy, regardless of how stupid it goddamn is. And, uh... One last one. You guys hear about uh, Sam Bankman Fried? That's that guy from FTX or whatever it was that uh, lost billions of dollars. Supposedly, uh, a bunch of people gave him money to buy Bitcoin, but he didn't buy Bitcoin. He just took it and he bought houses and he paid uh, like Joe Biden a bunch of fucking money. He's got 25 years in prison, folks. Uh, but of course, Elon Musk wrong about everything uh, when it first came out that he was ripping people off. Tom Fitton says, while the Biden gang has been harassing and threatening Elon Musk and his companies, one of the worst scams in modern finance was being perpetrated under their noses by a regular White House Hill visitor and the second biggest Democratic donor, to which Elon Musk, super genius, says, SBF was a major dim donor, so no investigation. That's right. Right about everything, Elon Musk. No investigation into SBF at all. Only, yeah, they just came 25 years, dude. Took his whole company down. Uh, so once again, Elon just will say fucking anything. I, he must be a genius. He's the richest man in the world. But he's never said a single word in public that wasn't just dumb as fucking shit. It's bizarre. I can't reconcile the two things, but there must be some explanation for it. And that's my should watch for the night. Hell yeah. Crypto, bro. Yeah, crypto, bro. It wasn't actually Bitcoin that was the problem. It was the fact that he wasn't actually buying the Bitcoin that was the problem. Bitcoin is actually doing really well right now, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. People get so mad if I even say the word Bitcoin. I'm going to have comments now. People are going to leave comments. <laughs> Dislike because you shield for shitcoin every goddamn time I even mention the fucking word. And... Uh, Besides that, I was right about it. I told you guys it was going to go up. It's more than doubled. It's gone up 120% since I told you guys it was going to go up. So even I was right about it, but I can't say it. I can't say it. You die if you stop drinking alcohol. Yeah, if, you, if you're incredibly addicted to alcohol, you can't just go off with cold turkey. You'll get the shakes and you'll fucking die. It's real dangerous. Do not do that. He's a genius until he speaks. Uh, it sounds like Porky Pig. Can't get a guy to send us out. Uh, but he's got to be some kind of business genius behind the scenes. His bank account would suggest as much. Elon Musk is not smart. He is, he is says, can't say says anymore on uh, X Twitter. They'll ban you for that. But he loves free speech. Bitcoin is chilling for Dusty. It ought to. I am single-handedly responsible for the fact that it's gone up to the moon. There's actually a really good reason that I knew it was going to go up. And it happened exactly like I thought it was going to. I, I, I could explain it, but I won't. Um, I'm not a capitalist, so... I mean, Bitcoin really is a way to help people escape the draconian grasp of the central bank. See, the central bank has the ability to print money out of thin fucking air. And when they do that, it's like a stealth tax. It makes the money that you have in the bank worth less for every fucking dollar they print 
it just like, you earn money your whole life. You put it in your bank account, your savings account, and they can just print much more money, which makes the worth of your money in the bank worth less. It's like taking the money from you and then giving it to other people. It's what they're doing behind your back. Well, Bitcoin eliminates that problem because uh, there's only so much Bitcoin that can exist in the uh, – the system, 21 million. So it's deflationary instead of inflationary. So it's a much better way to store your wealth than fiat currency, which can be basically stolen from you out the back end by the printing press of the central bank. That's not even the reason, though, that I knew Bitcoin was going to go up. That's beside the point. Uh, Bitcoin will go back down soon in the future. I mean, Bitcoin will go back down some, but it's going to continue to go up forever, in my opinion. Bitcoin will go forever. It's going to do like this. It's going to zigzag upwards forever. Believe it or not, you, you don't have to believe it, but we'll see if I'm right. I've been pretty right about it thus far. Buy Bitcoin if you like. You're a big boy. Yeah, do whatever you want to do. Um, so don't buy gold. Gold is not deflationary. G gold is actually inflationary. They continue to mine more gold, but also there are asteroids that are made of fucking gold. Once asteroid mining becomes a thing, it's going to be highly inflationary. Bitcoin is a much, much, much better choice uh, for wealth storage, in my opinion, than gold is. But do what you want to. I don't care. Um, I love transgenders. Hell yeah, delicious peach. Transgender people are cool. Greater fool theory, but it's not a greater fool theory. I, you guys can think what you want to. I don't care. Like, don't buy it. It's literally doubled, so don't listen to me. I used to believe it was a greater fool theory. I used to believe it was a scam. I used to believe all that shit. But I don't believe that anymore for sort of the reasons I just said, but... There are other reasons that are even better reasons that I won't get into right now. BTC has no practical parts to buy Ethereum. No, don't buy. So Ethereum will go up in the short because Bitcoin will pull everything up with it. But in the long run, Ethereum is going to zero. Because Ethereum is made, unlike Bitcoin, which is not made as a, it's not supposed to be money. Bitcoin is like more like digital gold. It's a storage of wealth. Ethereum is more meant to actually be spent, but it's not necessary. Because the, the uh, fiat dollar is a better choice than Ethereum for that. So I think in the long term, Ethereum is going to zero, but it's fine. Don't listen to me. It's all good. Um, Dusty, learn why crypto is shit. It's not hard to find out. Don't buy it. It's, hey, you don't have to do anything. Like, I've, I, I can almost guarantee you I've done more research on this than you have. So, and I've predicted it very well so far, and I can explain to you exactly why it's not a scam. Now, regular crypto is, I, I don't consider Bitcoin like regular crypto okay bitcoin is a completely separate category but anyway uh, let's move on folks get your super chats here we're gonna have one more quick section and then we're gonna read all the super chats so get them in but it's time for what the fuck no long term they're not all going to zero you people okay whatever it's just stupid bitcoin is not going to zero i can 100 percent assure you bitcoin is not going to fucking zero the die has already been cast for Bitcoin, uh, but you guys can believe what you want to. You can keep your money in fiat currency and you can have them steal it out from underneath you, especially since they're going to default. They're not going to default on the national debt, but what they're going to do is they're going to print more and more money to, to devalue the dollar bill in order to make the debt more manageable, which is a stealth tax on anybody who keeps their money in fiat currency. So the American dollar is more likely to go to zero than Bitcoin is because Bitcoin is deflationary and the fiat currency is inflationary, highly inflationary, in fact. Um, invest the big butt. Hell yeah, I got half my money in that right now. I'm sitting on it, baby. And all right, uh, first off, on what the fuck? Did you guys hear about this one? Texas woman found engaging in bestiality with a dog after husband's arrest for exposing himself to children. What a couple this is. A Montgomery couple was arrested after the man was arrested for indecency with a child and his wife was seen on a video on his phone engaging in bestiality with their dog. Lots of bad life decisions here. Uh, the McGurry County Precinct 3 Constable's Office said on March 13th, deputies were called to HEB Grocery Store, where it was reported an adult man identified as William Keen was following kids around the store exposing himself. Keen was arrested and later charged with indecency with a child by exposure. During the investigation, King's phone was taken, it's evidence, and a search warrant was executed. On his phone, authorities found his wife in a video, Jolie King, engaging in various sexual acts with the couple's Great Dane dog, among other images of child sexual assault. So yeah, lock these motherfuckers up. 
I mean, I'm sort of happy they found each other. No, I don't know. Gross. And then I'll take bad life decisions for $10 trillion, Alex. YouTube star named your fellow Arab allegedly kidnapped in Haiti for $600,000. So this guy decided to go to Haiti and interview one of the gang members named Barbecue, who is uh, allegedly a cannibal. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah, they kidnapped you. That's what could go wrong, you fucking idiot. So yeah, he's been held for $600,000 a ransom. Good uh, lordy, dipshit. And meanwhile... This is why I don't like to go anywhere, folks. This is why I am a homebody, a recluse. Motherfucker's crazy. I don't know. I, this woman seems like she's acting, but also you have to be crazy uh, to put on a performance like this on a plane in front of people. Anyway, let's have a look. Let this go. Can I do that with freedom? All I care about is freedom. That's fine. I've been there before. I'm not scared. I have fucking been there before. This nigga's hurting my elbow. He's hurting my wrist. You're hurting me, Sheriff. You're hurting me, Sheriff. Why are you talking? I can't breathe. Why are you touching my leg? Why are you touching my leg? She crazy ass shit. Get her off the plane. And then one more. Folks. Almost somehow worse than Imagine Dragons. Have you guys seen this? Apparently there is a new Amy Winehouse biopic that is coming out. And instead of just using Amy Winehouse's voice or getting someone who can sing as good as Amy Winehouse, they decided to let the actress who is starring this sing. And uh, here's what that looks like. Thought you had so many lessons to learn. I say you don't know what love is. Get a grip. Sound as if you're reading from some other tired script. Because I'm not going to meet your mother anytime. I just want to grip your body over my ah, no. go. That's oh, terrible. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hate it! Hate it! And I love me some Amy Winehouse. You guys might not know about me, but I'm a huge Amy Winehouse fan. Especially when I'm drinking, which I've done in a while. I love to listen to some Amy fucking Winehouse. She was badass. Oh, but alcohol killed the shit out of her. That isn't, that isn't bad? Are you out of your fucking... You need to have, have your hearing checked. Okay. Compared to Amy Winehouse, that was fucking terrible. You can't pretend to be Amy Winehouse and sound like that, motherfucker. Don't you get me started. I'll dig her up, throw her bones at you. And folks, I have a patron. Alcohol. Shut up, Dusty. Up. It is in every video I make. There is a uh, link. It's the first link. There you go. Boom. Click on it. And uh, could you please consider joining me on my Patreon? Become a member right there. Click it. 
and uh, become a member. And you get access to all the exclusive content that I make for you guys, which is every single night. I do a second show for like 20 minutes called The After Party with all the real best stuff. I save it for uh, the cool kids. So uh, anyway, if you like watch a couple of shows a week of mine and uh, you enjoy it, please consider supporting it. I don't make any money except through Super Chats and my Patreon. That's the only two ways I make money doing this show. And I work very, very hard doing this show. Um, so please help me make a living wage. And uh, I also spend a lot of my money on my animal sanctuary where I rescue lots of dogs and lots of cats to give them forever home. So if you like what I do, please consider supporting me. Thank you for letting me beg you for money. And now let's read the Super Chats. Hells yeah. How are we doing tonight on that? 10. Cut them 10. Call plus memberships for Rebecca Poise, who's awesome. Good to see you, not Rebecca. And Rebecca says for $25, thank you in advance for giving me something to look forward to on Saturday. Hey, thank you for supporting the show, Rebecca. Uh, what hero you are. Love you. And Jason asked me one. Cut them one. Call plus membership. Thank you, Jason. Red Scott. And I love you for $1.99. Parker, what up, Parker? Hello, money. Uh, that's all. Hey, that's all it needs to be. Parker, good to see you. I hope you're doing well. Socialist 499. Dusty, check out my AI song. It's called Soul Find Our Way. All right, I'll check that out. Did you make it with uh, Suna? Very cool. Juke, what up, Juke? $20. Dusty, glad to see you back. Hell yeah. Uh, after seeing my front. I got you all set on PayPal. Fuck yeah. And I can email you the lyrics. Okay. If you still want to make me a song, what do I owe you for the song? I mean, it depends on how long you want the song to be and how complicated you want it to be. Um, like, if you just want me to make you like a minute song and uh, I won't, like, whatever. I'll throw you one together for. 25 bucks but like if you were like a three minute full song that the whole thing sounds good and blends together that's a lot harder to do might cost a couple hundred bucks for that so i don't know it depends on you thank you Jim. good to see you i appreciate you um ten dollars from carol mcmickle it's my birthday happy birthday carolyn Thank you for spending it with us. And the hair tutorial has made my day complete. Thank you for being you. Hey, I, I do what I do. Good for men and women, I suggest. Uh, if you want to feel a little bit more secure about yourself, if you're worried about it, then just a uh, little dappy nap. See how look, good it looks? See, like, I got a full head of hair now, y'all. Rock on. Science. And it actually stays in place pretty good. Fuck yeah. I love this shit. Uh, Agent Orange. What up, Agent Orange? $25. Helping to get that evil head of hair nice and uh, bountiful. Hey, I, I need all the help I can get. I appreciate you. Money well spent. I, I think we can all agree. And killing it. Mm. Oh, white motherfucker. Parker, $10. Also proud to say that I got blocked by that idiot Boogie2988. Uh, I think, who is the, it's not Boogie. Who is the guy that made Minecraft? He's like a billionaire. Me and him had like some interactions on uh, Twitter one time. But anyway, dude wanted sympathy. I didn't give him any. Yeah, there's a fucking sack of shit. He's like, I'm dying. And I'm spending my last days trolling people and acting like an asshole. Well, die quicker then, motherfucker. Oh, Ryan McFadden, $20. When I did nitrous as a teen, I took a hit. And then reality turned violet and spun sideways because I fell onto the floor laughing. Yet your experience sounds like a calm, why to do some philosophical buzz. Explain, please. Uh, love you, mate. It's because I have more experience doing drugs than you. I have lots and lots and lots of experience doing drugs. And when you do it a lot, you can control the experience a lot easier. So that's the explanation for that. Even though I did freak out, that would not freak out, but I did have the uh, where I was hallucinating about Reddit. I told you guys about that. And that was still, I still can't explain it. It's weird. Maximum $10. Crypto is shit, bro. We all know. Okay, more for me. Don't fucking buy it. I don't give a shit. Ain't hurting me at all if you guys not buy it. More crypto for me. Although, once again, I don't consider Bitcoin to be crypto. Uh, Zamir Pound with $5. Five pounds. Pound Town. Hey, Dusty. Love how evil you are. I'm not evil today. Today, I am neutral. Chaotic neutral. I want to be evil just like you. Well, Take your vitamins and say your prayers. I'm going to be a super villain. Always look behind you. Because I'm a sodomizer. Hell yeah. Well, I'm going to clench my butt cheeks from now on. Just for you, Zamir. And uh, thank you, guys. I appreciate everybody donating tonight. Going to read all the rest of the Super Chats at the end of the show. So please get them in right now. Do it. Support me and the cats and the dogs and everybody on the Super Chats. And uh, move right along. It's time to get super depressed, folks. Raise your power fist. Time to free Palestine. Now that I'm not evil anymore, I'm not calling this segment, uh, Israel has right to defend itself. We're back to free Palestine. Until I'm evil again, then we're going to go right back. And uh, first off, folks, 
Anybody will resist this. Any, what, no, that's not even true. Anybody with an ounce of self-esteem, self-respect, uh, self-preservation would fight back against occupation, oppression. Not somebody like uh, Destiny. That's a little guy I could think of that probably wouldn't actually fight back. He'd probably suck his oppressor's dick. Little 98-pound weakling, some dipshit like that. But anybody else would fight back against this shit imagine being a kid living in this world where occupiers just come to abuse you whenever they fucking want to kind of like living in America I guess with cops with these dickheads they get off on it these psychos they get off on abusing people they think are beneath them. They're God's chosen people and these are animals to them. You're gonna go home and jack off to abusing this little kid. They want to make terrorists, folks. They're out of jobs if they don't make terrorists. They don't have somebody to fight. They need an enemy. So they go out to create the enemy and they do a great job of it. Pure fucking evil. Meanwhile, did you guys see this one? This guy out here with a sign that says, no ceasefire, this is the fucking you get, nuke Gaza. Let's see how that goes for him. Yeah, cut those hands. Cut the, hey. I don't know, maybe you should have signs that say murder children. I'm not for violence. I'm not for violence, but just saying. Ooh, a little bit, maybe. And then. Earlier this month, remember Joe Biden laying down the law to Bibi Netanyahu. He was like, oh, no, you are not going into Rafa. If you go into Rafa, that is a red line. Mr. Man, I'm going to have strong words for you if you go into, of course, it's Joe Biden, Israel's bottom bitch. So all that was just uh, fluff. Should he leak to make it seem like he was being tough against BB? But the truth is, no. U.S. pushes to shape Israel, Rafa operation, not stop it. We all knew that was going to happen. We all knew he literally wasn't going to stand up in any way to Israel. They're in this together. Arm in arm, every step of the way, murdering children together. Meanwhile, White House Press Secretary, Karine Jean Pereira, this woman, a few years back, was writing articles about how oppressed the Palestinian people are, about how cruel, evil, and terroristic Israel is to Palestine. Now, she sold her soul to child-murdering Joe Biden. Completely 180 defending this every step of the way and somebody crawling up on her ass and let her know about it watch this cowardly sack of shit as a hero attacks her in public hey kareen hey kareen why are you supporting Biden's genocide in gaza hey kareen kareen why do you support genocide in gaza when will you help us from this coward you and a tired yeah. run away run away cunt hey, look at me look me in the eyes and tell me you don't care about dead children look me in the fucking eyes hey yeah she here. won't look though me in the fucking eyes and tell me you don't care about dead children because she's a murder apologist sack of shit no morals no scruples democrats not as bad across the board as republicans uh, but on this issue worse probably in a lot of ways than they are evil pure fucking evil look me yeah, walk away, bitch. Walk Stop away. You've shown the world who you are now. Fucking coward. I hate these people, folks. I hate them. I'm ashamed to have ever called myself a Democrat. Meanwhile, Joe Biden out with Barack Obama and Bill Clinton doing a $100,000 a plate, $500,000 a plate dinners uh, to raise money. Child murdering, genocide, Joe Biden. And uh, heroes outside giving the rich assholes the business as they go in.
Look at these rich ass. They, they love being evil. This is the Democrats, folks. It's not Republicans. This is Democrats. Look how evil they are. Put it in your face. Yeah, go blow up a building. Yeah, like it's the people that want peace are the ones blowing up buildings. They literally are the ones trying to stop Joe Biden from blowing up buildings. You murderous cunt. So three minutes of this, I'll go ahead and skip ahead. Once they got inside, some protesters stood up. It's a chant against Joe Biden and Barack Obama. Because I think... And Bill Clinton. <laughs> Kicking them out. All the murderous cunts, all the Democrats in there clapping as they remove the protesters who want nothing more than children to stop being murdered. <laughs> they all are to the mind. Bloodthirsty, murderous sacks of shit. And chief among them, Barack fucking Obama. This smarmy, smug cunt got up there and chastising the audience for wanting children to stop being murdered, for wanting genocide to stop, for wanting the ethnic cleansing to stop. Got up there and said this to them. It was a very clear pre preparation for the fact that there might be disruptions from the audience. And there were, there were multiple. And Barack Obama took the opportunity to not just talk about on the substance what President Biden has managed to do and tried to do to bring some clarity to this very difficult, impossible situation. What? But then he at one point scolded some of the protesters who tried to interrupt him to say, you, you it's good to have moral clarity. And, and the protesters were about Gaza. In, uh, yeah. most, almost all of them yeah. about Gaza. But he, he said, it's one thing to have moral clarity, but the presidency, as he said, as only he can say, is a lonely seat. And it's, it's not enough to just have moral clarity. You have to be willing to listen to the other side, to try to tackle all the complications of this issue and actually get results. And that's what... Yeah, Obama telling people like me that we are listening to him and Joe Biden. The nerve of these motherfuckers when the exact opposite is goddamn true. You literally could lose... Donald Trump could end democracy forever because you refuse to listen. You refuse to stop sending their bombs. You refuse to stop murdering fucking children. Going to tell us that we are the ones not listening to the moral clarity of Joe fucking Biden. These goddamn sacks of shit. Drone striking Barack Obama, who has a history of murdering children himself. Getting up there. <sighs> Yeah, I'm just going to skip that part. Fuck that. Just angry. Meanwhile, folks, they're telling us that we're not listening. Breaking Biden administration green lights more bombs and warplanes for Israel, despite widening rift with Netanyahu. They know widening fucking rift. You're sending in more bombs. Yes, U.S. signs off on more bombs, warplanes for Israel. That's what he did right now. Yet, we are the ones not listening. Democracy as we know it could end because he won't listen. Yet smug-ass, child-murdering Barack Obama could tell us we are the fucking problem. The Biden administration in recent days quietly authorized the transfer of billions of dollars in bombs, folks. They sent 2,000 more 2,000-pound bombs. Over 30,000 innocent people killed, mostly children. Joe Biden sending bigger bombs, more of them. Yeah, we are the ones not listening, folks. Diarying in our throats and telling us it's pumpkin pie. That's all they fucking do. These evil sacks of shit. Meanwhile, why are they doing it? Because APAC, inside the Israel lobby's new $90 million war chest, their loyalty is not with our country. It is with Israel. They don't work for us. They literally work for Israel. Israel bribes them, and then they give money to Israel that Israel then once again turns around and uses to bribe them even more. How is this not illegal? Case in point. God bless APAC. 
If this capital crumbles to the ground, the one thing that would remain is our commitment to our aid, our cooperation with Israel. As long as I have the opportunity to serve in Congress, I'm going to make sure that that aid continues in a strongly robust fashion, mm -hmm. no conditions. For as yeah. long as I live. No conditions. For as long as I have the privilege of serving in the Senate from New York, I will unflinchingly, unstintingly, and with all of my strength, be Shomer Yisrael, a guardian of Israel. No, no Ladies shit. and gentlemen, I'm Yisrael Chai. Yeah. They gave you a million and a half dollars. You sold out your fucking country. Yay! It's awesome, isn't it? It's awesome your loyalty is not with us. Hooray! But we deserve, folks. We deserve to get butt fuck like, like this. This is what we deserve. America, we are the fucking worst. Get what you fucking deserve. Meanwhile, Israel loses support everywhere, of course. They've even lost the fucking Atlantic, which has been as pro-Israel as any rag has ever been. U.S. support for Israel war has become indefensible. They've even lost the support, it seemingly, at least somewhat, of India, who's been one of their staunchest supporters. This says that was literally the only nation left standing with Israel. Well, that's bullshit, America. We are owned by Israel. And uh, last but not least on Free Palestine... I've been pretty complimentary towards Jessica on Fox News, but even she is an evil fucking cunt. So this clip has uh, two interesting things about it. First off, this uh, black gentleman here, Terrell, is going to speak for Jewish Americans. And then she, who is a Jewish American, tries to speak for herself. And he's like, don't do that. Don't do that. Which is ironic. But of course, then she's going to turn right around and defend Joe Biden. Because she's evil, just like all the Democrats. Anybody that calls himself a Democrat is evil. I'm sorry. I know it's probably a lot of you in my audience. Sorry. Sorry. If you are not independent at this point, now I understand having to vote for Joe Biden because let's, I understand all that. But if you, at this point, can still, still call yourself a Democrat, I got nothing for you. He has abandoned Israel. And you want to know, it's not just Israel. He abandoned Jewish Americans attending universities. I mean, let's be clear. Joe Biden will do anything to win Michigan. Throwing our, our biggest ally under the bus, throwing Jewish Americans under the bus at these universities, shame on Joe Biden. This is ridiculous. It's outrageous. As the only Jewish American on the panel, I think. Oh, that, that, don't, play, sure. don't, don't do that. I, don't do that. Well, that, that that's not you the You said point. Jewish You're, American. Um, I oh, am a Jewish okay, American. Okay. No. You're, ahead, a big di time, you're a big time Democrat, and you're going to defend Joe Biden, notwithstanding the numbers, and you know he's throwing Israel under the bus, and he's throwing Jewish American students under the bus at all these universities. It's a crazy part. Like, the only thing they really can call out Joe Biden for that would be legitimate is the child murders, the unceasing support of Israel. Yet they want the child murdering even more than the Democrats do. So they can't even call him out on the one subject that they actually have some meat behind them on. But of course, now here she is going to defend Joe Biden. Diversity is sickening. Oh. Yeah, I'll give you 10 seconds, Jessica. I'm in. Jewish American telling you that there are definitely issues with the policy. I loved how Joe Biden came out of the gate as the strongest supporter in the international community of Israel. I know that he wants a solid fix. I know that he also yeah. understands that even within Israel, there are problems with Bibi Netanyahu's leadership. And yeah, I think that what you're saying, Leo, is very dangerous, just like what President Trump was saying. Is dangerous? Very dangerous, about dangerous? Why to, throw, to, to, throw, to throw Israel under the bus? Why? Yeah. How is he throwing them under the bus? He's literally giving them everything they fucking want. It's just crazy. Gaslighting all the time from all fucking sides. And that is my free Palestine section. I'm leftist in a far-right country. I'm a progressive. That's about all I can say at the moment. But I don't feel like I have any side to be on, which is frustrating and lonely. Uh, Biden is a Zionist, uh, obviously. Very proudly. It's Fox News. Let's see, what do you expect? I expect exactly what I just showed you. I'm the devil. Well, hell yeah. Nice to meet you. Hope you guess my name. Shut the fuck up, you bunch of cunts. Well, it's kind of my job not to shut up, so I can't at the moment. But I will later, I promise. I actually don't really talk that much in real life. 
people that know me in real life are always kind of surprised when they watch my show because they're like, damn, like, you were very talkative on that show. Yeah, that's sort of the whole point of me doing the show. I don't say much in real life. I just kind of um stoic. And all right, we're along, folks. Get your super chats in. We're going to do a religious bullshit followed by an OK Boomer and a hero. So the show has got about, I don't know, 10 minutes left. Uh, but for now, it's time for... And uh, nothing goes together like religion and mental illness. It's like chocolate and peanut butter. Case in point, these fucking weirdos. I will lift you up. I will lift you up. Well, then do it. I will lift you up. You're not lifting her up. She's in your boobs. Okay, then please, immediately. Where are your shoes at? Nice, definitely completely fucking sane, irrational people who shouldn't be embarrassed anyway. And meanwhile, Kevin Sorbo back whining his ass off. Let's have a look. The cathartic moment. What was the moment that Kevin Sorbo and Sam said, we can't do this anymore. We got to do it our way. Well, I ultimately get called in my manager and agent of many years and uh, about 11 years ago and they say we can't work with you anymore because you're a Christian and a conservative and that's going to be hard for Definitely us to happened. get you into any studios here. And I laughed at him and I said, it's amazing. You're the you're the people that scream for tolerance all the time and freedom of speech. But as you know, it's a one way street. OK, first of all, this is I love this argument, the straw man that right wingers have created that the left has claimed that we are tolerant of everything. Yeah, we're not tolerant of them. This You guys made this up. You guys made the straw man up to beat up. No left-wing person ever said they were fucking tolerant of everything. Now, they do say that I'm tolerant of, people, of things that don't hurt other people. Like somebody wants to be gay. They don't hurt anybody. Fine. Somebody wants to be trans. That's fine. But if somebody wants to be a pedophile, we're not tolerant of that. Somebody wants to be a dickhead who spreads hate and toxicity, we're not tolerant of that. So they make up bullshit in order to... uh have something to fight back against, and uh, hey, we got a little visitor, Mr. Nibbler. No, it's an, yeah, it's Nibbler in it. Yeah, Nibbler, what's up, Nibbler? Come on, buddy. What's up? What you got sad eyes for? He just got a bath. You get a bath, buddy? Hell yeah. This is my sweet boy, Mr. Nibbler. He's like, what's going on, Daddy? I usually don't get brought in here. I know it's weird, isn't it, buddy? Yeah, you don't seem very excited about it. You don't seem too excited about it. You want some bone bones? Want a little bone, buddy? You want a little bone? He's like, oh, what the hell's going on, Daddy? They prefer to be in their own room. They have their own crates. They feel safe. He's like, it smells like cats in here, don't it? It smells like cats. Are you cold? He's shaking. Oh, poor buddy. You want to do the show with me? We only got 10 minutes left. You want to hang out with me and do the show? Yeah, we got uh, four of these rescued off the highway. Nibbler, Patty, uh, Bloof, who's not with us anymore, and uh, Runt. So this is Mr. Nibbler, named after the dog on, or the alien dog on Futurama. Dogs are cool. I know he's scared. Poor buddy, he's shaking. You're not as chill as Miss Patty was. Miss Patty had more fun in here. He's wet. I think he's chilly. You chilly, buddy? I'm sorry. The show will be over in a minute. You just hang out there for a minute. And all right, we're along on the religious bullshit. Got a couple more for you guys. SBC Church, uh, Josh Howerton has a message for you, uh, new brides out there. Let's see if this is sexist anyway. Let's see if you applaud this. Ladies, when you get to his wedding night, he's been planning this night his whole life. So what you need to do is stand where he tells you to stand, wear what he tells you to wear, and do what he tells you to do. You're going to make him the happiest man in the world. 
Nice, just be a slave, ladies. Isn't that what you all? Yeah, Puffer's so sad. Poor buddy. Why are you so sad? Why are you so sad? Pet me more, Daddy. Pet me more. He's all wet. He's got a nice bath. I think he's cold. You a little bit cold. You a little bit cold. You out of your comfort zone. You be my little star. You be my little star. You better be my star. I go get that belly. Go get your belly. And that on religious bullshit. Yeah, he getting he warming up on me a little bit. He's warming up a little bit. He's like, don't stop petting me, Daddy. Don't you stop petting me. Um This shit is all over where I live, guys. Literally every single town has one of these. Christians erect another two hundred and forty thousand dollar cross in Mississippi. Every town. These people will say shit like, hey, you want to know somebody's an atheist? Just wait. They'll tell you about it. Meanwhile, church every 10 fucking feet in these giant monstrosity eyesores every town right the highway. What a fucking waste of money. I guess there's nothing better for Christians to spend their ill-gotten gains on. And then, prophetess uh, Julie Green is back, y'all, and, uh, you're going to be shocked. Apparently, God told her all about the bridge collapse before it happened. Now, she didn't tell anybody ahead of time, but uh, uh, that's not suspicious at all, y'all. She's definitely telling the truth. That hit a bridge. And the bridge completely collapsed. The Lord has talked to us about waters. He's talked to us about cargo ships. And he talked to us about bridges and collapsing of bridges. And when I saw this this morning, I was just, you know, praying. I said, okay, Lord, how do you want me to handle it? What do you want me to do? And of course, he wants us to pray about it. Because God has been warning us of these things starting to happen. And so now we're starting to see things. And God, again, has been saying about things are intensifying. That's why we always should be praying that we are always at the right place at the right time. Like we've had to cancel trips more than I want to admit, because the Lord said, no, don't go. And when God says, don't go, don't go. And the reason for that is because he knows if there's danger ahead. He knows if the enemy has a trap that you don't see. And so I'm asking each and every one of you this day, not only to pray with me, but we also have to pray together that no matter what the enemies are doing, and no matter what they have planned, no weapon formed against it shall prosper. So, devil, why do you tell us if God warned you? Going to say this like $2 billion. That bridge is expensive, but uh, I don't know. I guess God's got plenty of money. He'll work it out. Hey, sweetheart. You get warm a little bit. You warm it up at all. Why are you so sad eyed? Not a very good co-host, to be honest with you, but it's okay. I love you anyway. I love you anyway. You get the bone? Get that bone. Get a nice chicken bone for you. Yeah. Got a good bone? And, uh, well, then, let's see. Oh, one more, folks. My favorite satirist, uh, Brett Terhune, has some thoughts about Trump selling Bibles. Let's have a look. So I just seen on Fox News that you liberals are getting perfect attendance down at butthurt university once again because you're mad that my president and still your president donald j trump is selling bibles and i love it you know this right here has always just been a, a book that i've hidden behind but now that i got it in front of me <laughs> i can see it's beautiful and this one's special. There are many like it, but this one is mine. It's got the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, the Pledge of Allegiance, and it's the Bible. It's like it's like if a Swiss Army knife was a book. I'm surprised there's not a goddamn can opener on this one. It's got all the things a Christian American needs in one easily avoidable book. It's the only Bible endorsed by Donald J. Trump. All them other Bibles are false holy books. This is this ain't ghost written. This is holy ghost written. You won't catch any of them drag queens reading this down at the library, and that's how you know it's worth checking out. And just as as freedom 
ain't free, neither is salvation. This costs $60 plus shipping and handling. And you know, I get down on my knees every night and I say to my Lord and Savior, I, I say, Lord, thank you for sending me Jesus, Mr. Trump. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Trump is a good man. He just gets me and all my money. He's like if Jesus and the president and the home shopping network was a person. But wait, there's more. He's just a good <coughs> He's just a good businessman. Cause he found a way to charge sixty dollars for a book that's free in every hotel room. <laughs> but can you blame him? This has got everything in it. It's American Christi Christianity in a nutshell. And if you don't Love is a bread your own and nailed it as always. Yes, he is just uh, satirizing Magus. Pretty good. And all right, that is my religious bullshit. Hell yeah. You guys love Brett? You know you do. This can't be real. It is not real. That is Brett to your room. He is a brilliant satirist. You should follow him on Twitter if you're not already doing so. Get down on his knees for this, BF. They're ticking our jobs. Definitely, library. Definitely good at delivering his lines. I'll give him that. And uh, SNL, close enough. It's Brett Turhoon. And all right, folks. We're going to do uh, two OK Boomers real fast uh, and one hero and then a palate cleanser to finish off with. So let's do it. Play the new OK Boomer theme song. You guys seem to love this. OK Boomer. Go towards the light. Just do it! Hell yeah! First off, OK Boomers, Karen uh, gets on Amazon a van and blocks the driver from leaving because I guess uh, they parked in a spot that she didn't think they should. Yeah, this is what I have to deal with at work. <laughs> but you're able to talk on the phone while you're at work. That's so interesting. Yeah, because you was recording me. So I'm recording you now. You can report me. What, what are you reporting? I got recording. Great. So I'm trying to get information and you are not providing it. Would you I like thought you to... go through the Amazon out. Nope. I need to know your name or ID number. I need to know your supervisor. My name is Sharon Smith. Okay. I'm gonna just go ahead and put that down. Sharon Smith. Right. I can't give you the other information because I don't know the other information. Uh, I doubt that. But you can go through the Amazon app, can file, or file a complaint, and no. it'll be like that. Okay. That's it. That's not going to work. You, okay. don't, you don't recognize who you're speaking with, do you? No. I don't know who I, I really am. Don't, I really don't care. <laughs> I know you don't. I don't care. <laughs> More information. Do you know that it says resident parking only? Oh, no. I'm speaking to you. Have a nice day. So you know I've got all your information. In That's fine. It's, it's a parking lot. I ain't did nothing wrong. Yes, you did something wrong. What I do? You were extremely rude. You made me wait. It says condo parking only. You've taken two spots. And there's plenty of parking over there. Okay, so why didn't you park over there? I live here. Okay, it's just, I'm just this, delivering a package. I know, but you don't have to be rude about it. And you I don't have to be rude. You don't have to take two spots, and you don't have to continue to make someone wait. Okay. You just, saw me pulling in. Have a nice day. You saw me pulling in. Yeah, go towards the light, bitch. Busy bodies that don't do their time, except for bother people just trying to do their job. And one more. The greatest generation. They just, I mean, I know probably Alzheimer's and medical issues have a lot to do with this, but they're just so entitled, so privileges that they throw tantrums like little children when they don't get their fucking way. Classic uh, Boomer Karen white lady shit.
You don't even feel you need to breathe. Uh, uh, I said five times I told you my name and my birthday. Uh, just damn having a fucking tantrum panic attack did get my way immediately i'm calling 911 classic boomer shit and that is my okay boomer go towards the light section and mental health issues i know right sad fucking america Definitely acts like a toddler, that's for sure. More like old timers, old timers disease. Don't want to get that. Hope I die for I get old. Talking about my generation. And all right, folks, we have one hero coming up. Let's fucking do it. You're old. And might as well be today, and uh, guess who's our hero today? It's everybody's favorite actor, Kevin Bacon! Delicious in every single way. And uh, let's see what he has to say. Drag is an art, and drag is a right. Drag is a centuries-old art form of creativity, expression, and self-exploration. It's an opportunity to educate through entertainment, and it's not dangerous. At Six Degrees, we believe in amplifying the voices of those that are experiencing injustice. So join us in supporting the ACLU Drag Defense Fund by shopping our bonfire campaign or making a gift. Designed by the amazing Mason K, Kira and I are honored to support this important fund and we welcome you to do the same. Drag uh, yeah, our- time to get loose, foot loose, kick off my Sunday shoes. Love me some Kevin Bacon. Thank you, you fucking hero. Trans rights, hell yeah. And one more to finish us off with, folks. We're going to do one palate cleanser. This is a cute one. Little man knows how to cook. Oh, isn't it cute? Man, this makes me want to have a kid, y'all. I'm going to put that little motherfucker to work. I'm going to buy all kinds of cooking equipment. I'm going to be like, I'm hungry. Better make me some breakfast. This kid's a little old. Boy, my kid gets like, I don't know, six months. Get him on that Gordon Ramsay shit. I'm going to have a couple. Have a little assembly line. Looks good as shit. That kid's like, 10 seconds old, already a better cook than I am. That's fluffy as fuck. How'd you do that? Hey, somebody cut that shit up for my bed. Some cheat going on here. It's still cute, though. Like, damn, that's colorful. I want one. That's a big sandwich. And then he's like, no, I'm nice. I'm going to give it to my grandpa. I made this for you. Delicious. Hell yeah, y'all. I'm going to spit me out a little chitlin before too long. I'm going to be all annoying. Have my kid on the show. It'll ruin it. So look forward to that in the future. And all right, folks, that is my show. Join me right now on the after party where I have all this stuff from here down to here to cover. All the stuff I didn't cover on the regular show. So you know you want to watch it. Uh, available to all the patrons and the Dust Buddies. So if you're not a patron or a Dust Buddy, uh, correct yourself. And speaking of which, Jason asked me just get the five of you lucky motherfuckers. A Dusty membership. Check the uh, community section of YouTube for the link to tonight's after party. For the kiddies, thank you, Joe Bot, and the doggies tonight. Ain't that right, Mr. Nibbler? He's doing a little better now. He's a little warmed up. I think he was a little cold because he's all wet. Had to give him a bath before I get you on my bed. Had to give you a bath. You a shedding motherfucker, ain't you? You shedding like a bitch. But you a sweet boy, yeah, yeah. Daddy, was you? Daddy, was you? 
<laughs> Daddy loves you. He does. He's so fat because of Melvin. They get all this Melvin food. It was cute. So I tell you guys before about my uh, neighbor lives on the street, Melvin, um, and he works at a mental health facility, and uh, so they have like a cafeteria there. And so uh, every other day, he brings me a couple plates from the cafeteria, um, and he likes to come over here and every once in a while and feed some of the food to uh, the dogs over the fence. The dogs are usually outside every day; they have their own big huge fenced in area and they like to feed the food the dogs uh but he comes around and gives me a couple plates every of the couple of days and it was so cute melvin came or and I, I didn't say this part but um and hope he doesn't watch the show so it's funny to say this i don't actually eat the food melvin brings me um i feed 100 percent up to the dogs because um it, it's kind of processed stuff and i eat i eat fairly healthy um so i don't need any of that stuff but it all goes to the dogs but i don't tell him that because i want him to keep bringing the food to me because uh I like him. He's my friend. I want to come over and chat with me. And the dogs like it. The dogs get human food. They love that shit. But it also like gives us a bond. And uh, it's real important to have good relationships with your neighbors. Because if you don't have good relationships with your neighbors, you don't want to fucking live in your house, right? It's, it's, it's terrible. Uh, so for lots of reasons, I enjoy coming over and giving me the food. So he came over the other day and he gave me a, a, this three, three styrofoam containers of food. And he's like, Dusty, I just want to ask you to do me a favor. And uh, I said, what's that, Melvin? He's like, if like you ever don't eat any of this food, could you start feeding some of it to the dogs? <laughs> I just, I didn't, I laughed inside because I literally feed 100% of the dogs. And I was like, okay, Melvin, just for you, if I don't eat any of this food, I'll feed it to the dogs from now on. But anyway, that's why these dogs are so fucking fat because they eat better than most humans do. Literally eat better than most humans on earth do. Um, so, go! Cool. Um, what else we got? Okay, you've been paid. Hell yeah. Let's begin the conversation over email at your leisure. All right. Uh, Colton, let's do it at gmail.com. Send me a uh, message and uh, I'll get back to you. Sounds good to me. Jupe, appreciate you. God told me to plant my seed. I demand $2,000. $1 for every year Jesus stood me up. Um, more than that, Jesus better break out the piggy bank. I'm an expensive date. Thank you, Agent Orange. You rock. BBC, what BBC? Hell yeah! Hugh wrote of the show, BBC. Sorry that I can't be in the chat tonight. I am working on the clerk stuff still. I have a deadline. Love you all. Hey, well, priorities. Good luck to you. We're all with you. And uh, keep us posted how it goes. Appreciate you, BBC. Holy shit from King Yellowman. Holy shit to you. Never been a tolerate of uh, intolerance. Nope. Definitely are not. So stupid. Evil Dusty, the red eye filter was awesome. But I'm not evil today, so I couldn't put it on. But I still got it. In the holster for whenever I get another evil job. And uh, for the win all day. And Chris Clark, both five and ten. Cult of Lesson memberships. Heroes, every one of you. And I appreciate you. Chris Clark, hit the like button, fuckos. Do it. Hit the like button. You know you want to. Leave comments. Hit the like button. Subscribe. You know how it works. Hey, Dusty. Love how evil you are. Uh, I think I read that. All right, cool. Anything pop up? Um, six dollars from MJ. What up, MJ? Good to see you tonight. Thanks for showing us the happy stuff. Sometimes they're still good in the world. Yep, gotta keep it positive. I'm, I'm gonna try to be more positive from now on. Um, I'm, I'm working on it, folks. I had some epiphanies when I was on nitrous, and that's one of the things is to try to be uh, more positive on the show. So I am working on that. And thank you, thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jupe. Thank you, Agent Orange, BBC, everybody. Uh, very appreciated. And uh, folks, I'll be back on Monday, Monday, Monday. It's only a weekend away for another episode of the World's Greatest Show. So make plans to come join me. I'll see you guys soon. Let's play a little butt ponies on the way out. Hell yeah, an original tune by me, Uncle Dusty. And uh, a lot of shit out you guys. Good night.
It's not baby powder, you sack of shit. It's hair fibers made of chitin. Switch over now. Thank you, Jason. That's me, MJ.